much y'all in here in my leather shop y'all can see just give y'all a little view right through here y'all can kind of see uh, it's, it's kind of kind of a mess i guess you can say but uh this is where i do all my work in here and uh i still haven't opened up the other little shop there to give me more room so everything i do right now is right in here and uh for right now you know it works out pretty good um let me show you right here so i had this uh customer email me and uh what he wanted was a uh ammo case a pouch for a uh western drop belt that he had and um he said it needed to uh I have a uh, two and a half inch uh, belt loops on the back of it and um, he also wanted uh, me to try to match up the color best I could which you know that's always you know you know here or there you know I do the best I could do on that but um, uh, seemed like I got it pretty close and uh, he wanted a uh, real brass uh, snaps so um, believe it or not y'all uh, <laughs> trying to find brass snaps uh, the certain size it's a lot harder than you think it is, you know. Um, I actually found these through um, Springfield Leather, and uh, they're, they're supposed to be real brass, and uh, they're really good snaps. They sit really good. So uh, I ordered uh, two packs of them. I'll show you right here. I ordered two packs of them right there. Uh, they're made in China, but uh, I tried looking up some that uh, was made in the uh, United States, and... Uh, it's just hard to find any, you know, um, just, uh, if y'all know any out there that's real good, that's made in, in, the, in America, just let me know in the comments below, because I, I would like to know. Uh, but anyway, y'all, uh, he said you just need to hold five rounds, and uh, let me show you here. Made some uh, cartridge loops inside to uh, hold the uh, cartridges and uh this is a little bit bigger as far as the the depth of it uh for a 30 30 but i had to make it a little bit bigger because of the uh two and quarter inch uh belt that uh he's gonna be using so what i did y'all i hold this camera and show y'all so what i did uh right down in here is a uh leather block right in there so when the ammo actually goes into the uh let me see, show y'all what it looks like here. So, I'm going to put these in. Y'all got to do a better job on uh, recording in my leather shop. I seem like it's uh, always a uh, problem getting uh, a camera in here and, and actually showing you what I'm doing and stuff. And uh, but for most time, I don't I don't worry about recording. But you know, y'all, uh, that's what it looks like right there with the uh, mo in it. Show you how they're in there. I think he's gonna be real happy with it. And uh, I'll show you that's what it looks like from the side there. But the only thing left to do now is uh, I'm gonna put some. Uh, conditioner beeswax uh leather conditioner i just made this up this morning this is my like more like a wax uh, type right here that i use to put on my stuff to uh buff it out make it shine a little bit but uh, this is gonna be a little bit uh more thinner and it's gonna soak into the leather real nice there and help treat it and uh so that's what we can do right now just get that done and uh We'll be back in a minute. So I'll make this out of just neat soot oil and uh, beeswax. And this particular beeswax I ordered from a guy. He got a bee farm out there in uh, Kentucky. And uh, she's gonna let this soak in real good. And this helped protect this uh, ammo out i'm not really sure you know how you know what he's going to be using it for as uh, far as you know i don't know if he's going to be taking his hunt or if he's going to be just uh using this in some you know some kind of competition you no know, far as a cowboy shooting 
I'm not really sure what calibers they use to do that, but um, I was thinking they use maybe 38 special, 357 maybe. So if y'all know, y'all leave a comment down below. Uh, they may use 3032, I'm not really sure. But I'm just going to rub this in real good. And then I'll wipe it down. And uh, then the color he had, what he said was a a walnut what he told me on the email and um, so I dyed this in was a light brown Phoebus Pro dye and uh, this leather is a Shaheen 8 to 9 ounce leather and I used the Ritz uh, Tiger Thread get up under there real good and also yesterday when I was making it it's already been treated one time with some uh, Neat's Food Oil I do that uh, initially right after I get through dyeing it y'all I put a, a coat of that on there real good and this is going to be my final um, coat of uh, this beeswax Neat's Food Oil so. Alright y'all, I'm going to let this dry and uh, w when it's done drying everything, I'll bring y'all back and I'll uh, show you what it looks like. Alright y'all, uh, I'm going to bring y'all along and show you a little bit of this uh, Bug 110 knife sheath I'm making. It's going to be a uh, one of my favorite knife sheaths I make. It's, uh, it's going to be like a molded type sheath. Right now what I'm doing, I'm just cutting out this uh, belt loop for the back of it and uh, getting a measurement here on it I'm going to use this nine, 8 9 ounce uh, Shaheen leather this belt loop here I want it to be about 1 and 3 16 just make that mark here I could use my strap cutter for this but since it's just a little small little piece here I'm just kind of taking me some uh, measurements here and I'm gonna just cut it off might be able to hear the uh, air condition running in the background but it's hot down here in Mississippi we've been having temps uh, feels like 105 110 degrees so it's pretty warm square my edge up here now Piece of leather here.
kind of takes longer this video will be real long y'all if i show y'all every little thing i do while i'm making uh these sheaths and different things but i'll just bring y'all along show you some of it here got that done that's just gonna be my belt loop for the back of it and uh, I'm gonna get some holes punched in it and uh, start working on the uh, I'll tell you what while I'm here or cut it off here let me just go ahead and um, get these uh, edges uh, cleaned up here other two pieces that I've cut out for the uh, sheath itself that looks like it right there Get these cleaned up Try to keep this uh, edge or sharp here, so I do a good job on getting ready to edge my leather. All right, got this done, and uh, tell you what, might as well go ahead and get my maker's mark put on it. wax leather conditioner we're just rubbing in real good and I don't know my thinking is it might help even out the color a little bit too right after I get through dyeing it and also it helps soften that leather up um, after the dye has been put on and uh, it's gonna help protect that leather also back there I've got that dyed and I'm fixing to get ready to put my glue down and uh, I'll be putting it together I'm just going to buff this after it's dried there and I'm gonna get ready to uh, put my tan coat on
I'm gonna put a coat of this uh, beeswax polish on it. And I gotta do that right now, especially on this back piece, because once I put that uh, belt loop on it, it'd be a little bit harder. You can still do it, but uh, it'd be a little bit harder getting it rubbed in like I want it. So these shoes I make y'all, it's a lot of steps that I go through on them. And like this step you see here, this would be done at least three, two to three more times and more than that sometimes, depending what I'm wanting, um, how it turn out and everything. But uh, this is done to all my leather work. So there's a lot of different steps and uh, time actually that I put into each piece when I'm making them. All right, now that I got that done, now I'm ready to go ahead to get this uh, belt loop right here sewed on. Almost got y'all. Uh, this is something I do on all my uh, sheaves also. And uh, I find it helps out as far as dye transfer on white thread. I use white thread a lot. And if you're using a brown or a dark color, it really don't matter. But uh, I just take me a needle and a piece of thread with a knot tied on the end of it like it's right here. And I just run through these holes, chase chase these holes with a piece of thread doubled up. And it uh, does two things. It helps clean out any kind of beeswax conditioner left in it. Also, it helps uh, any kind of dye build up anything in there. It kind of helps clean that hole out. And uh, also opens the hole up a little better for whenever I get ready to uh, stitch it. So I just want to show y'all that right there. And I'll do that on the sheath side of it and the loop. I usually do this uh, off camera just because it's a lot easier, but I'm just kind of showing you here what I do right here. And uh, you can use a stitching pony, which, you know, I don't, I don't have one. I never bought one. I just usually just do it in my hand. And uh, I have used my vise before on some things that I need to hold, but eventually uh, I'll probably make me a stitching pony or buy me one. So far, I've just been doing it. All my sewing, just holding it in my hand for the most part. Seems like I can uh, do about as good as a job and don't seem like I'm bent over as much. But anyway, y'all, what I'm gonna do is I'll come back and uh, I'll, I'll do another layer. So it'll be like two uh, stitching, all the way around double stitching. And I'll do the bottom stitch and uh, the blue is done dried, so I'm ready to put these two pieces together. This here, I'm going to take time right here, get them even as possible. While I come back and I do a final sanding and everything around the edges here. It's all dry and everything. All right. All right. And uh, let me show you while well, I got the camera on. Here's the uh, ammo pouch right here, finished, dried. That's what it looks like. contact them, let them know it's done and 
Hopefully he'll be happy with it. I'm just marking my holes right now. So when we get around a curve, I go to a different stitch and iron. I go, one of that two prongs on it. Child went to the uh, drill press on this uh, thicker leather. What I do, I just uh, drill my holes with the drill press instead of using my stitching iron going all the way through. And then I come back and I smooth out the holes on the back of it. And then I go back each individual hole. I go back and take my stitching iron and push through the hole. All right, y'all got this uh, good and wet. So the next thing I'll do, I'll just run this back in here, open up a little bit, and then I'll take my knife and position it. Now, if you wanna wrap your handle up and stuff on your knife, you want to, uh, this knife, uh, I don't never wrap it up. I always dry it off real good afterwards, and uh, it's never gave me no trouble. But anyway, I like position my I'm right hand carrier, and uh, this is gonna be a right hand sheet. So I'll position with the lock this way and uh, I'm just going to insert that and get it completely seated where I want it just like that then I'll take me a uh, what I use now I'm gonna make me one out of deer antler but for right now uh, it works pretty good I just use a sharpie and what I do I just uh, work around the edges of it. Now this is a eight to nine ounce leather. And uh, if you want to mold your buck 110, completely mold it, you know, which probably won't use a thinner leather. But what I do, I just go around the edges of it, just like the, right here. And I just start slowly molding around the uh, knife itself. And it's not meant to be a complete mold, like just imprint the knife completely. But uh, what it is, it, it does mold it to a certain extent, give you a nice little outline around it. And uh, I come around on the backside, I'll do the same thing. At the weather, <clears throat> at the leather, seems like it gets a little bit dry. I'll come back and I'll put a little bit more water on it, y'all. And uh, so that's all I'll do, y'all, on this particular sheath right here, is I go around it. And, uh, and I do the final details. I get, I get around the, the edges of it and I try to you know press it down if I see something I don't like and uh, same way here I may get me a, my, my thumb here and I start working this in right in here to uh, smooth it out a little bit just like it right there and uh, y'all can kind of see 
what it looks like. And uh, let me uh, go ahead and get this finished up and I'll bring y'all back and show you uh, what to do, the very last steps and what it looks like. All right, y'all, the next thing we're gonna do is uh, just put a little water on the edge of it and I'm gonna go back and uh, do a little sanding on it. That's gonna help uh, smooth the edges out a little bit more before I get ready to uh, burnish it. I always try to put my cap back on my uh, die because if you don't, I've knocked it off before and I've kind of learned from that. So now what I'm gonna do is I just go along my edges and die the edges. And uh, this takes just a little bit of time here because you gotta be kind of careful not get it all over your rest of your sheath. But the first initial layer there we don't have to worry about it. It goes on. Just so I'll probably put about four or five coats of dye on there. Then I come back. Go along the edges of it. Make sure I'm getting my edges real good. And if I get something on there, I just kind of wipe it off. I left my knife in there, I guess, probably, I don't know, maybe 30, 45 minutes before I took it out. And then I let it dry probably a couple hours. I put it in front of a fan to speed up the process so it won't take quite as long. get the top of it here. here down the edge here I gotta get that off the good thing about it that beeswax I put on it if you if you do get a little bit on the edge of it 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 don't uh, really soak in as quick so it gives you a little time to get some of it off but uh, I'm going to let this dry just a little bit then I'm going to go and go ahead and uh, burnish the edges with this token of all right y'all be back token oil on the edges of it and I'm just gonna go through start to burnish the edges of it there and 
and I always like starting out first just a flat part of the uh, burnishing tool then I'll come back on the when I get through and use the round part of it right here Y'all, I'm gonna do the final couple of steps right here, real quick. And uh, this is gonna be my beeswax leather conditioner right here. And uh, what I do, I just uh, rub it all on my sheath. And this happens, y'all, more than one time, depending on the, what I'm trying to uh, get the sheath to look like. But this one right here, uh, I think just one good coat is going to be plenty. Because I've done had several coats of uh, beeswax and neat foot oil already. But this just going to be my final time putting it on. And uh, so I'll take my time. Even on this step right here, put on my edges of it, even though they've been sealed with the, the tan coat. I go back and I put it on the, the edges of it, and I go back, rub it in some more on the front of it. So when, when you order or purchase a sheath from me, this is what, what you're gonna be getting. You're gonna have a lot of different steps that I've taken to make that knife sheath. It's been made with pride. And uh, I put probably, I don't know, like say two and a half, three hours of, of work probably in every sheath, generally. And some of them might, might be that long, but uh, Something like this would definitely have that amount of time in it. But ne nevertheless, uh, regardless of the time, everything I do is done with pride. And uh, so we got one more step here. Just gonna let that soak in and show y'all what that kind of looks like right now. Give y'all a close up view of that while it's drying. And uh, like I say, a lot of times I let it dry and I put like three four different coats of this on there before and then before i ship it out y'all when somebody orders something from me online there from etsy i i go through the same process you just see me doing right here and uh i'll buff it hand buff it one fit to show you now before i uh, send it out so that's the last step before you get it i do this process you, you're seeing here one more time and uh also gets test fitted uh, before I send it out and I'll fix them to uh, test fit it right now also. And that's, and that's just to verify that the knife fits in the sheath properly and I know that when I send it out you're going to be happy with it and it's, it's, it's going to it's going to last you a long time and the leather I use is uh, I always use good leather. I don't buy the cheapest leather. Uh, right now, what I use, I've got Herman Oak leather that I'll be using and Shaheen leather. And as of right now, that's the two leathers I'll be using. And um, that's what I like. So, uh, just gonna polish that up a little bit more give y'all a look do a little test fit here all right y'all there's this uh sheath right here this is in dark brown and uh it's made out of eight nine ounce leather and uh, the belt size I, I got a little blank over here this can be a one and three quarter inch belt. So 
that's what size it'll go up to. Y'all can kind of see right there. And uh, it's a little stiff right now, just because it's brand new. But uh, it'll fit up to one and three quarter inch belt. And uh, go ahead and test fit it. That's what it looks like right there, y'all. That's what a buck 110. Got a nice smooth transition right there. It's just like a ball going into a glove, y'all. It's, it's meant to be. All right, y'all. Um, hope y'all enjoy watching video today. And uh, I'll post this on uh, a link down below. You can go to my uh, Etsy shop. And uh, this sheath will be up there on my Etsy shop if anybody out there would like to uh, purchase uh, this sheath and if it's already sold by the time you get there uh, just I'll leave my email also in the description there and I right, y'all forgot to tell y'all one thing hey if y'all go over at my Ace shop and you order this knife sheath or you order anything from me there y'all leave a message there and let me know y'all seen it on YouTube there I always like knowing you know where where you know my customers come from you know where they see me on YouTube or they just saw my AC shop looking around for something in particular another thing y'all um, you can also if you want something like a nice sheath or different uh, say a, a color dye or just anything in particular there you want to talk about uh, you can message me there on my private email which I'm leaving the link below or you can just message me on my um, uh, message on the, the uh, Etsy sh uh, shop right there and uh, we can talk about what you want there also. Alright, appreciate y'all. Y'all have a blessed day. See you later. Bye-bye.